This is one of the boards that we're going to be using today. What I'd like to do is check to see where this thing breaks down at. There's 1,000 volt. There's 2,000 volt. Oh, right there. Not too bad, so 2200 volts. And you can see I've taken an X-Acto knife and I've just rounded the edges and I've opened up this gap a little bit. There's 1500. There's 2000. There's 3000 volts. There's 4000. about 4200 yeah so this gap would be more than enough and I'll probably end up having to cut this a little bit wider for some of the parts that I want to run again I'm only going to be looking at basically a thousand volts for any of these tests hello again and welcome so in a previous video I showed this fluke 189 one of the tests that I didn't perform was where I removed the two fuses and then I applied the 2000 volts. And I had mentioned that the reason I didn't perform that test is because the wattage rating of these two resistors, I'm afraid is just too low and I would probably just damage these two resistors. This is out of 61010-2-033. And this is section 101.3.2. And again, here we can see if the protection device is a fuse, it's replaced with an open circuited fuse. The voltage of two times the highest rated voltage for any terminal is applied to the terminals of the overcurrent protected measuring circuit for one minute. The source of the test voltage should be capable of delivering 500 VA. During and after the test, no damage to the equipment shall occur. Now again, if you look at that new Fluke 87V that I purchased, the resistors that that meter has are quite large. So as long as I got this meter out, one of the things I should mention is this display was badly cracked. I ended up taking a hammer, literally, and I smashed that lens out of there. This is one that I cut out of a piece of Lexan. As you can see, it fits in there fairly nice. Anyway, so I'd like to continue with that testing. So I have some different resistors. So this is a 4.7 meg, half watt. Let's just go ahead and measure the resistance, and you can see it's 4.733 meg. So let's say the meter used this 4.7 meg instead of a 1 meg resistor. So if we put 2,000 volts across this resistor, that'll end up dissipating about 0.4 watts. I also have some other resistors. These are surface mounted. And again, we can see this is a... 4.6912 meg. Here's a MELF part. And this is a 5 meg. 4.97. Typically the 0805 parts are only good for an eighth watt. And the 1206s are good for a quarter watt. So if we wanted to dissipate more power with one of these 0805s, we could put two in series and that's what I've done here. So I thought what I'd do is try to put a thousand volts across each one of these resistors. So again, I've got our small power supply out, and this is capable of a little over 2,000 volts. And I've made up some small test leads. So let's just go ahead and we'll plug this in. So this meter on the left, again, is attached to our attenuator. All right, let me get our clock out. All I'm going to do now is just turn this thing up to 1,000 volts. It should be fine with this, except the voltage breakdown for this part isn't 1,000 volts. So let's just see what happens. Again, 1,000 volts is going to be 100 volts on this meter because it's a divide by 10 attenuator. So there you go, there's 1,000 volts. And there you have it. So that's one minute. You can see it's not discolored at all. So this resistor survives this test just fine. So let's just try this with our little MELF part. 
I suspect based on the body size this parts only good for a quarter watt again this is a 5 mega ohm resistor so it's going to be dissipating 0.2 watts so again even if this is rated for a quarter watt it should be just fine we'll go ahead and turn on our power supply there's our thousand volts while that's running let's just go ahead and check the resistance of the other resistor we just ran and you can see it hasn't changed at all 4.739 it's right in with what it was. And again, you can see there's no discoloration. Let's just go ahead and check the resistance. And again, you can see it's still 5 meg. So again, the IEC standards calls for a 500 VA power supply to be used during this testing. What I've got here is our high power 1 kV power supply. The Bryman's no longer attached to the attenuator. It's just hooked directly to the output of our power supply. Let's just go ahead and turn it on. And you can see I've got 1,000 volts. Hopefully these pins are going to be able to handle this. Alright, let's give it a shot. You can see what it looks like. In this power supply, I actually blew a half amp fuse with it. Again, safety is very important if you're working with high voltages and high currents like this. Again, most GFIs will trip out at about 8 milliamps or so. So this is definitely something that could be lethal. Alright, let's try this again with our two resistors in series. So here's a thousand volts. No problems. Let's just try putting 2,000 volts across this one. I'm going to have to turn it up a little bit. And there you have it. So that's 2,000 volts for one minute. What I don't like about this technique is that if one of the parts fails, then it can cause a cascade effect and basically all the parts in series could fail. And personally, I wouldn't think even two of these in series would give you enough margin where I would feel comfortable with it. The only thing I don't like about this is once they fail, obviously we're going to put a lot of current through the circuit board and that's going to go down into the sensing circuitry so that's going to have to handle all that as well which it's probably not going to be able to not at 500 VA so if you were designing a circuit like this for a meter there's nothing that says that you couldn't use parts like this for the detection circuit and get away with it they don't have to be surge rated they don't have to be flame proof now of course I wouldn't design a meter like this but again that doesn't prevent other people from doing it if you happen to use a device that's rated for, you know, three, 400 volts and it survives during their testing, I guess it's possible that they could certify the meter. So if you're curious why I'm specifically looking at 4.7 mega ohm surface mount resistors and why I'm testing two of them in series. So David sent me one of the early 121 GW prototypes. Again, I can't stress that enough that this is a prototype meter. But when I had this thing apart, I remember seeing four resistors in this detection circuit. Now, the parts that this meter uses versus the ones that are sold in the Kickstarter, I'm not sure what package they're using. You know, maybe they're a special type of resistor that are able to handle the surge voltages. So if you wanted to look to see what packages your meter uses, again, you'd have to remove the circuit board from the meter. Those resistors are located in this area right here, and they're on the front side of the board. I'm not going to be running this test on this exact meter, so my plan is once I know this design is stable, I'm going to buy one or two of these meters for a review, and then I'm going to perform all these tests on it. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Till the next video. Later.